Hi everyone, this is Abhinav from Phone Bunch, and today we are reviewing the Lenovo A6000. It's the cheapest 4G LTE device available in India right now for about Rs. 699. It comes with the quad core Snapdragon 410 64-bit chipset with a beautiful 5-inch HD IPS display and 1 gig of RAM. Now the question is, what are the issues with this device? Does it have solid build quality and battery life? How is it at gaming and how are its cameras? Now we have already answered some of these questions and the rest of them will be answered in this full review. So let's start with the build first. On the left you have absolutely nothing. At the top you have the 3.5 audio jack, micro USB data syncing and charging port. On the right you have the volume rocker and power button. Both are very sturdy, offer good feedback as well. At the bottom you have the primary microphone. Moving to the back you can see you have your 8 megapixel camera. At the bottom you have two stereo speakers with the Dolby branding. Lenovo branding right there in the middle as well. Now I do notice a bit of creaking in this back cover and that's probably not restricted to this handset. The build quality is pretty decent. It's a very thin device as well and the camera doesn't protrude at the back. You can see there is no flex in the back cover. However, it does creak a little bit. Now this is a dual SIM smartphone. You have two SIM card slots. It supports 4G LTE as well. And you can add up to 32 gigs of micro SD card storage and you have a 2300mAh lithium polymer battery. Now talking about the battery, you can easily get more than one day of usage with average use on the A6000 and you have the Snapdragon 410 quad core processor powering this smartphone with an Adreno 306 GPU. Now if we come to the front, you have a 2 megapixel camera right up top, proximity and light sensors. 5 inch HD IPS display with great viewing angles, they are wide and you have 3 capacitive buttons for recent, home and back which don't light up. Now the main issue with this device actually is RAM management but we'll talk about that in a short while from now. Now let's get back to the display again, it has great viewing angles, great color reproduction and there's no distortion in brightness of colors even when you tilt this display. You can see it right there absolutely perfect wide viewing angles. The touch response remains excellent even in gaming as you have already seen in our gaming review. Now let me change some wallpapers so you will be able to see the color reproduction yourself as well. Now sunlight visibility of this display is actually quite good too and the auto brightness mode actually works well too. You can see right here great colors and a very vibrant display is available. It's really surprising to see how Lenovo was able to add such a brilliant display at such a meager price point. Coming to network and call quality, that's another forte for this device. Call quality is excellent. There is no issue with echo or any other disturbance added due to the device itself. Now you can record calls as well directly from within the interface. So that's an added bonus. Everything is saved in the default right disk. Wi-Fi hotspot, USB and Bluetooth tethering is supported. You have GPS built in too, which is able to locate quickly, especially when you are outside. Now let's talk about the camera. You have an 8 megapixel rear, 2 megapixel front facing unit. You have touch to focus available. Now I don't like this camera interface per se. We have a separate camera review. You can take a look at that as well. You can take up to 8 megapixel still images. Auto HDR can also be enabled and only 720p videos can be captured. Now the camera module is a bit towards the top of the phone so sometimes inadvertently your finger does come into the image. Now this camera is able to capture really good images in ambient light. It's definitely not as good a camera as the Acer Zenfone 5 1.2 GHz but it really gets the job done. It can capture great amount of details but you have to use tap to focus instead of using autofocus to capture images, otherwise they do turn out to be a bit fuzzy. Overall, it's an excellent camera. You can see here, with and without touch to focus. The front facing camera can take decent shots as well, but the night mode or low light imaging is definitely not a forte for this camera. The flash doesn't work that well either, it overexposes images. Now let's take a look at software. So the Lenovo A6000 runs on Vibe UI 2.0 which is based on Android 4.4.4 KitKat and a lollipop update for this phone will be available as well later on. 
Now, long tapping the menu button opens up your recent apps as well as your task manager. You can go ahead and you can kill all the tasks and it behaves as the menu key on single tap. Now, there are several settings available in the launcher. You can go ahead and customize certain desktop gestures as well. Flick down opens up the notification tray. Flick up opens up settings. And if you double tap on a free space, you get all the recent apps that you have used. So nifty features here, you can customize the animations of the home screens. You can go ahead and add or remove home screens as well. Now you can add widgets directly too. You can change the theme of the device, but at present only two themes are available. Now this is your notification shade, all the notification toggles available right there. And you can see from right here, this phone is running Android 4.4.4 KitKat right out of the box with a lollipop update pending. Now out of the 8 gig ROM, you have about 4.3 gigs available to you. Now you can choose where you want your apps to be installed right from the option above by choosing the default right disk. Now you have an option available in apps to choose a default install location. I would set it to system recommendation. Choosing anything else actually causes a lot of issues. Now I can see right here the main issue with this device. Just 78 MB of RAM is free right now out of 1 GB with just 4 apps open. Now RAM management is a major concern on this device which makes it bogged down if you use it for a long time. Now if we come to web browsing, we have opened up phonebunch.com, our mobile website has opened up and I don't see any lag in scrolling here. Now switching over to the desktop website, you can see a slight hint of lag while scrolling through the interface and the text does take a little bit of time to flow in as well. So this becomes an issue when you have several tabs open in Chrome, the phone begins to bog down and the scrolling becomes a bit laggy as well. Now this happens only when there is very little RAM available on the device. So the only major issue with this device is RAM management. The garbage connection is really slow. Even if you haven't used the app for a long time, it still remains active in memory. So that uses up space, but that said, due to the fast processor, multitasking doesn't seem to be that big of an issue on the device. Now this is the headset you get within the box. It's really rubbish. I would suggest getting your own pair if you want to listen to music. These are really bad for music listening. Now coming to music playback, the speakerphone does begin to crackle at full volume, especially if you have Dolby turned on. So you can go into Dolby and you can just switch it off to see which mode actually suits best. Now instead of choosing a different mode, I actually found turning Dolby off as a better solution to stop the crackling speakerphone. But you can go ahead and customize the equalizer to suit your needs and the crackling does stop on some occasions. Now FM radio is also supported. It actually plays quite well even when you are moving and you can record FM in stereo quality and play as well. 1080p video playback is also supported and there are no issues here. MKV, MP4, 3GP, FLV files are supported. You can go ahead and you can install MX Player to play any other format if you like. Now we are going to play a YouTube video. We are playing our benchmarks of the Samsung Galaxy Grand Max which features the same chipset but with 1.5 gigs of RAM. Again, at 720p, YouTube playback is flawless as well. No ghosting, no freezing, no stuttering whatsoever. Now it's time for a wrap up. The display on the Lenovo A6000 is the best you can get at this price point. The twin speakers at the bottom are loud, but they do tend to crackle. The cameras, both the back and the front are actually quite good. The build quality of the device is pretty decent and it's very responsive in terms of overall usage and performance as well. Now coming to the bad stuff, RAM management is an issue with this device. Available RAM quickly drops below 100 MB even in general usage with a few apps open. The speakerphone at the back does tend to crackle at full volume. There's no notification LED, USB OTG is not supported either and well that's a list of bad things. But for rupees 699 the Lenovo A6000 is the best budget device you can get right now. There are a few software quirks that can be fixed with OTA updates, but apart from that, it's a solid offering. We'll be back with more. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. 
Any questions hit us in the comment section. Thanks for watching and as always have a great day.